A brief history of Damascus steel. During the long years of the Crusades, the armies of Europe found themselves badly outnumbered. Not only were there more Saracens than Crusaders in the Holy Land, but the armies of Islam were much better equipped. They rode sleek, swift horses, bred for the hot desert climate, wore a chainmail light enough to provide them maximum mobility, yet strong enough to stop European blades, and used weapons made of steel so well forged that it bent under pressure without breaking, yet hold an edge so sharp it could cleave a man in half with only the force behind one arm. What was the secret of the Near East? Its forging guarded so well by swordsmiths of Syria. The steel was called Damascus steel, a term used by crusaders to describe the metal used by artisans and swordsmiths of Damascus and Syria, just east of Beirut. These metal workers, particularly during the Middle Ages, were famous for their ability to hammer and temper wood steel into fine and supple blades. Wood was not a type of steel, but rather a way of transporting and forming steel by casting it into shape of a flat cake. Wood steel is described as early as 400 BC by Aristotle. The iron in wood steel was processed in bellows charcoal furnace by heating together magnetite, iron ore and charcoal. Non-metallic impurities were then removed from the iron by repeated hot working called forging and folding and the metal was left was formed into massive blocks called billets. The final product, wood, was made by removing any excess carbon from the metal through reheating the blocks to a temperature just below melting point. Carefully hammering, shaping and treating of the metal by Damascus armourers produced a steel so perfect that the sword blades could bend from point to hilt without breaking or warping and could also be honed to a very sharp edge. Persian swords were renowned for this high quality metal making use of what in Persia was called watered steel. It was called this because the surface alternated with bands of dark and light wavy lines, just like watermarks. This strong beautiful amalgam of iron and carbon was the forerunner of Damascus steel as we know it today. The watered effect of Persian and later Damascus steel was achieved by forging the blades from steel containing very high proportions of carbon. The dense, dark areas of the blade surface were the residual carbon marks, whereas the lighter areas were formed by particulates of bonded iron carbide. The contrast was very often enhanced by acid etching. The surface colour of the blade could also be altered with the careful application of different chemicals and by repeated etching. Steel manufacturing was carefully studied and documented by Islamic scientists. Their texts were available to swordsmiths throughout the Islamic world, who guarded their secret jealously. Damascus steel was especially valuable because it combined hardness and elasticity, and would hold an edge for a long time. Though steel manufacturing has expanded and improved over the centuries since the Crusades, Damascus steel remains one of the most prized of blades metals in the world, outdone only by the invention of modern day stainless and carbon steels. Alright guys, um, I'm doing this video uh, just to show a YouTuber viewer who left a comment saying that uh, my Bushcraft Damascus knife was not a Damascus knife. Now his exact quote was, that's not a Damascus blade. And I asked him, can you tell me why you think it's not a Damascus blade? And his reply to that question was, Damascus have like etched blades. That's not. It's just like a weird blade. So I don't think this kid actually really knows what a Damascus blade is. Um, so I thought I'd do this video just to prove to him that it, my bushcraft knife here is as actually Damascus steel. And I should know because I made the bloody thing. Okay, I've just attached a magnifying lens to my camera lens. And here you go, this is macro shot of my blade. Now, it's not very visible, but you can 
can just make out the layers of the Damascus you can just see like that circular one right in the middle of the screen there now down near the cutting edge you don't see it because it's been polished now ignore the horizontal scratches those are just scratch marks from the manufacturing process of me actually making what's called steel flint blade that's those ridges that you see the actual layers of the steel can be seen beyond that like for example just there see those circular lines that's the different layers and there the squiggly lines that's the different layers of the two different steels coming through and you can see it on the other side as well see the circular bit just there that actually matches the one on the other side now the distance from that one to the edge is greater than the distance of that one to this edge the reason being is it's actually going up on an angle it's not going straight through it's going up on an angle now to show you comparison to something else these layers are just pretty much sort of a mishmash when it comes to the grain the lines that they follow and also these grooves that I have in the actual blade are at different depths and they're not um, perfect but I'll show you something else this is a knife that was sent to me from a friend in Japan uh, this knife was made by a swordsmith a Japanese swordsmith and you can see here that's the rough part of the steel and then as you go down you can actually see the layers so if we can get this in camera you can see the layers there and the closer to the edge it gets the closer to the edge it gets the more polished they are so they're less visible and the final final one is that one just there because here you've got the high carbon steel for the cutting edge and the other layers are actually of a lesser carbon steel to give it strength and flexibility but if I go to the front you can actually see see those lines right in the middle of the screen just there those are the different layers of the steel as you go towards the front you can actually see they join up with the lines below you can just make that out there so this just proves Damascus steel does not necessarily have to be etched the etching process that, is, that some people talk about is just used to highlight the different types to the different layers and the different shades of the steel so what I'm going to do even though I don't like this particular knife of mine to be etched because what you're actually doing is you're roughing up the surface which there's a greater chance of moisture being retained I prefer mine to be polished that way it repels more water what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly etch this for you so you can see the difference okay what I've got here is a bottle of ferric chloride which is uh, an etchant solution and I'm just going to apply it with some cotton buds And 
that's enough. So it's just a few seconds. Now ferric chloride is quite dangerous to use, so normally I would have rubber gloves on, but I can't actually find any because I've run out of them. But I do have my safety glasses on. Alright, I'll show you the comparison now. Okay, here we go. Now this is the side which I have not etched. I've left it as it is. And that is the side that I have just etched. As you can see, it shows up the two different steels. The higher the carbon content, the darker the steel. So that is the process of etching. The longer you leave the etch on there, the more raised the different the two different steels will be. One will be eaten away more by the etchant solution than the other one, so you'll get the raised surface. And that's what you see in this photo. So once again, this is when it's been polished and it's just a silver look to the steel. This is when it's etched. So yes, this bushcraft knife of mine is Damascus steel. I hope you learned something from this. And I hope people watching don't be too hasty when leaving comments. If you don't know what you're talking about, just move on to the next video please.